Hello, everyone, and welcome to St. Matthew's Anglican Church. I am your priest, Reverend Philip Stonhouse, and every Monday we do a noon renewal that it comes from the Book of Common Prayer. You'll find a PDF below in the description if you'd like to follow along. If you also have a book, you're welcome to follow along as well. I'll give you two page numbers. One will be the regular book and one will be the PDF. Um, one is 56 pages further ahead than the other. Every Monday, I also like to explore churches across uh, the world, just to see beautiful sanctuaries. And today we're going to one in Quebec City, Notre Dame, uh, the cathedral there. It's a very beautiful uh, church I've, I've never heard of before, but um, it, its special features are some of these pictures and, and some of this gold um, design. If you could just see, there's someone, at, there's Jesus at the top lifted above the gold as if he's being held up in praise uh, by so many others. And I, I think that's a really important thing that we do together is we hold up Jesus in praise. Um, not that we're supporting him, but that our praise actually does something to lift him up in this world, to show others uh, who he is and that sort of thing. Um, show others the glory and honor that is due his name. It's just natural to him. We're going to begin a service on page four or page 60, uh, if you're using the PDF. So let's just take a few moments. I'll open with some sentences and then we'll begin on page four. Take a few moments just to welcome God in. To know his presence with us. Have him open our eyes, open our ears to what he'd like to tell us and show us today. God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is close at hand. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Page four and 60. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice of the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most, saying this together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. Grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent, absolution and remission of their sins. 
He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe in his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Top of the next page. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's read together the Benedictus uh, on page 9 or on page 65. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the, all, the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our psalm for today will be Psalm 141. You'll find it on page 512 or 568. We'll say it responsibly at the whole verse. Psalm 141, 512, 158. Lord, I call upon thee. Haste thee unto me, and consider my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as incense and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth, and keep the doors of my lips. All that not mine heart be inclined to an evil thing, let me not be occupied in ungodly works. With the men that work wickedness, neither let me eat of such things as please them. Let the righteous smite me in kindness, and let him reprove me. It shall be as oil for the head. Let not my head refuse it, that still my prayer shall be against their evil doings. But mine eyes look upon thee, O Lord God, in thee is my trust. O cost, cast not out my soul. Keep me from the snare that they have laid for me, and from the traps of the evildoers. Let the ungodly fall into their own nets together, and let me ever escape them. Our readings for this day are taken from the 19th Sunday after Trinity, found on page 249 or 305. Page 249 or 305. First reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, beginning at the 17th verse. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their hearts, who being past feeling, have given themselves over 
and to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning your former manner of life, the old personhood, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new humanity, humanhood, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, wherefore putting away lying, speaking every man, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another, be ye angry and yet sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor. Working with his hands the thing which is good. That ye may have to give to him that needeth. Let no evil speech proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Here is the first reading. The second reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, the ninth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Behold, they brought to him a man sick, a palsy, lying on a bed. Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power to, on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, arise, take up thy bed and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power unto humanity. Gospel of Christ. Let's just take a few moments to reflect. Think about what we just heard. Have you ever come to something in your life that you really enjoyed? At least once upon a time, you really enjoyed it. And then now going back, you find you're not enjoying it as much. Maybe this comes and goes. Maybe it's um, for a moment. Maybe it lasts. But when you're doing this thing that you love or had loved, 
we just don't find joy in the same way out of it. I know if I, I've experienced this in my life. And I think in COVID times when, you know, a lot of the things we normally would do, spend time with one another and uh, be in community, some of those things that we distracted ourselves, we find are feeling like as much work as anything else. I think sometimes in our lives, this happens because we try to let these things consume us or we make these things really important or mostly that we don't bring God in. We're not trying to see the good that comes from God in everything and in these things. And so Paul immediately tries to warn us of a few experiences the vanity of the mind, which comes from not knowing Jesus, from not having him in our hearts at all times. Now, you might remember, um, shoot, what is the book in the Bible, um, where it says, vanity, everything is vanity, or wind, everything is wind. Our minds can have a fickleness about them, where one point they just like something, appreciate something, or wants to do something, but then at the next, those are nothing. We ignore them. But with God, there is a foundation. There is not a fickle or shifting sand we are stable and one. We are who we were created to be in God, in Jesus. There is no fickleness in God. There is faithfulness. So in turning to him, we will find ourselves faithful too. There's also, he also warns us against a lacking understanding. People that turn against God or don't connect with him, their understanding is darkened. I think this sort of has two visions. First, that they can't see what is truly there. They can't see what they truly need, what they can truly appreciate, what they can they truly be thankful for. But also that there can be this darkness that hangs over everything, every moment, every relationship, if God is not in it. Sure, you might uh, feel light out of everything at any time, but without God, that darkness will come, and it will hang, and it will be scary and sad. But the more we bring God into it, the more it will be light, both light and freeing, but also light to our lives. He also warns us against being alienated from the life of God. Our life is literally a gift from God. It is a giving of himself to us, of his life, so that we might have life. And so, it makes sense that when we turn away from him, when we're not connected to him, we don't have life in its fullness. Our life can become more and more lacking. And so it is like we are alienated from our very own life. We are separated, we're disconnected. But, we can connect with God and be restored, refreshed, rejuvenated, resurrected in this life, which then just becomes the fourth taste of a life to come. The other thing that Paul warns us against is that when we're not connecting with God, 
when we become fickle, when we don't understand, when we don't have the very life of God. It destroys our work. The actions we do, the words we say, becomes about lasciviousness, about seeking our desires, about seeking what we want, and works greediness and uncleanness. It spreads the same desire just to please ourselves and gather and keep and hoard to ourselves. But when we bring God in again and again and again, the very love that flows from him flows through us and back to him and to one another. Our love for God overflows and pours out on all those that need it. This comes very parallel with our gospel reading, which is Jesus forgiving the sins of a man who has the palsy, who can't move, who can barely look up from his bed. Here's a man who can't act on his own, that needs faithful friends to carry him and bring him to Jesus. But Jesus knows first things first. He knows that before he needs healing of the body, we all need healing of the soul. It doesn't matter what we, if we can move, we're still as much imprisoned if we don't have Jesus with us. It might be when we're confined to our bed, we blame that on God. But when we're moving, we blame other things too until we find him. And so Jesus says to us and to him, Your sins are forgiven. What you have done wrong, the ways you have turned against God, the ways you have missed the mark, those are forgiven so that now you might turn back to me. So turn back. And God to show us the freedom that his healing and forgiveness brings. Brings this man bodily healing. In some ways, the man didn't actually need it. He had faithful friends. He had God. He might have lived a very fruitful life there. But God does this as a message to all of us that the freedom we could just imagine from being able to get up after not being able to get up for however long, is not equal to the freedom we will experience when we come to Jesus, when we come to him in faithfulness, when we bring our friends to him in faithfulness. There can be such a freedom and a life from God. So let us turn to him this day and seek the healing of our hearts and souls that our minds may be clear, that we might no longer live in vanity, but find the very joy of life that comes from him alone. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Amen. We continue on page 10 or page 66 with the creed in the middle of the page. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and ever more mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, for as much as without thee we are not able to please thee, mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For today's prayer, let's leave space for God to listen for him, to offer the prayers in our hearts, to offer our worries, our successes, our thanks, our praise, what we're sorry for. I thank you, God, for this day. the rest in peace we can find with you, that you have protected us to this point, kept us whole. Thank you for the life you've given us, for the people and the love you have brought in and out of our lives. For all the things we had the privilege to share, the memories, the gifts, the time. We thank you, God, for your willingness to forgive us again and again. Your willing love to seek us out as much as we've turned away. Thank you for the stability. The groundedness that we can find in you in whatever, no matter what is happening in this world. Thank you for the healing that you have brought into people's lives. For 
Kamu We pray for all those that still need healing, either of their souls or their bodies, or their minds. We pray for clarity of understanding, grounded thoughts, and the life that comes from you alone. We pray for repentance, for turning towards you. We pray for the healing. Those with mobility issues, those with cancer, those with heart problems, and those who are addicted, Think of those with cancer. Lord God, we thank you that you are always faithful. And that when we turn to you, especially when we're gathered together, that you are with us, that you hear us. Pray, Lord, that we might seek you out wherever we go. We might know your presence every moment, every day. So we filled with the life that comes from you alone. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. It is always a joy to be able to worship God with you to praise him and dwell in his word, which is the very offering of life. I hope this has fed you today. If you'd like more, there are plenty more of these on YouTube. Um, otherwise, have a happy Thanksgiving and I hope to see you soon, either online or in person on our Sunday worship. Anyways, talk to you soon. God bless everyone.